everyone, welcome to your moon reading. So this moon reading is going to be for the waxing crescent moon in Pisces. And the waxing crescent moon will in Pisces will be lasting from January 6th to the 8th. So let's go ahead and see what energies are in line. I'm totally feeling to use these cards. Legacy of the Divine by, I believe it's by our beloved Chiro Marchetti. All right. If you'd like to have a personal reading with me or an energy healing session with me live via Zoom, you know where to look. It's um, somewhere on the page. Oh, how lovely. Ten of Cups. Ten of Cups speaking of emotional fulfillment. I love this. But it's almost like I feel to chuck it out the window, throw it out the window. So during this, uh, hard, as hard as it is to believe, during this uh, Pisces moon, you might be kind of getting this feeling to rough it a little bit. Maybe you want to, uh, maybe you don't want to, but that's the energy that's here. Kind of, you know what, I'm also seeing, <laughs> I'm also seeing that for some of you, you'll be actually throwing somebody out of a place of comfort. I just shuffled the cards. <laughs> Two of cups. There's our romance card, right? Our connection card. So some of you may actually be finding yourself removing a partner of some significance from a place of comfort or some kind of uh, pedestal or wherever it is that they... Um, Whatever comfort they're used to having. Now remember that anytime we can talk about uh, you and your interrelationships with others, we could also be talking about the relationship that you have with self. So this could also be about a dynamic where you are, I guess, removed for whatever reason, whether it's by yourself or by the hand of someone else, from a place of comfort. But you know what? There's a the lover's card in reverse. Wow, okay. But you know what? Um, this may not necessarily be a bad thing. I think it would depend on the circumstances under which you're doing it. So for example, if it's yourself, maybe you're trying to um, uh, collaborate with other people. Maybe you're trying to compromise with other people. And so you're giving up some form of creature comfort for the sake of others. It could also be that you are... Yeah, you, thank you. They're saying you could be uh, seeking comfort elsewhere in other uh, forms. Of being so you see we just don't know but this will have come after a victory of some sort now the five of swords is talking about a victory of course we it's not the nice clean victory we all love as in the six of wands this is the five of swords like I beat your tail kind of victory um, it is uh, also winning at all costs it could be about the kinds of uh, victories that come along the battlefield but for whatever for whatever it's worth in this reading we're looking at this state of being that you're achieving as something that has come from um some of the some of the guides are saying a long-standing feud for some of you but it comes from some type of uh um gosh so many words codependence right so you're beating codependence with somebody for some of you for some of you this is showing me that you're beating codependence with uh, an entity that you've been having some type of symbiotic relationship with guys we, we were so varied this <laughs> I'm just reading the universal dynamics but if you saw the details you'd be like oh my gosh <laughs> we all should be on this video yeah yeah because we're looking at the universal dynamics from a higher standpoint and um, we're also seeing that this could be about you just yeah just getting out of a state of something that may have been comfortable for a time uh, in in the interests of getting something new and I would argue something better for you right we have this page of coins this is about you having received something by way of your efforts now I do like I do like to say that sometimes it's not what you do it's how you do it yeah so you have to break up you have to separate you have to leave you have to draw boundaries but how you do it is all the importance in my opinion maybe that's my five placements in libra bending over backwards and forwards to <laughs> placate you know apologize and all of this and but you know and p and make peace but but i do believe that the diplomacy is important right so, so but i do feel that for some of you during this time you might just be like, I don't care, right? And I am very, very 
aware of the Capricornian energies in the air. I, in fact, when I first started a reading, I, I had to remind myself this is Piscean energy. So it'd be very interesting for the watching astrologers to, you know, let me know or, or, or DM me about what's going on with Capricorn, Capricornian energies or the ruling planet for Capricorn because uh, something's happening here. But that being said, um, I'm seeing that you want to be mindful about how you transition. This is talking about transition, right? How you transi transition, guys, because you can transition in a way that can bring about a long winter for yourself, meaning you have burned bridges, you have um, made things difficult for people to connect with you, or you can do this transition in a way where you are still connecting with people but in an interdependent way in a healthy way we have, we have the five of wands which is about conflict right so we see the five of wands here we go Ding! right and we know that any conflict that occurs outside of us is reflecting an inner conflict and we need only our own only duty is to try to get to the bottom of where that conflict is within us but i do see that with some diligence under this moon in particular they're highlighting that because you know when it comes to piscean energy there is the um i yes the temptation is what i'm getting temptation but also there is the tendency to kind of like meh details aren't important meh i'm just going to check out i'm going to everything becomes fluid nothing's defined let's see where this leads and you know suddenly we're bohemian you know um but the guides are saying this is a time that with the knight of coins earth energy due diligence you can wrap things up properly you can do so nicely and kindly if if that is your way and if you'd like to not have a harsh winter so to speak um but we do see that things will be coming to uh, a successful close here, right? With the Ten of Wands, putting down your burden. So something that was heavy before, or someone that was heavy before, is going to be put down. Now, why did they make me, why did I say put down and then moved on? It's like, oh, we got to put all yeller down. Like, um, is someone being put down? And I don't want to know. But the way they just said that, it's like kill shot. The last time, dear God, the last time they talked about a kill shot was back in July. And I don't know if you saw some of the readings that came out at that time, but the idea of the kill shot is that Imagine you have this this wagon just uh, 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 ambling along this old squeaky wagon ambling along in the in the open plains and then you've got this sniper like laying on his belly you know covered with <laughs> whatever straw and everything and all he needs to do is take that one shot that kill shot straight to the weakest part of that wagon and boink, and all of a sudden the whole wagon starts to fall apart. Now that happened last year in 2021, around um, July, mid to late July, and then early August, after which a lot started to happen as a result. But what was being cleared up at that time was old patterns, old karmic patterns, major ones that had been around for lifetimes for a lot of you. So if you found the latter part of last year to have been excruciating, dear God, then you possibly had some type of kill shot event that happened with somebody. So here I'm seeing this is like part one. Look at this. This card, for whatever reason, is showing me part one. You know, maybe because it's also here with the three of wands. Part two is going to come in the next moon is what they're giving me. So I'm looking forward to seeing what they talk about uh, under the moon in Aries, right? But um, this moon in Pisces is showing clearing things up, getting things done, being reminded by your guides to stay grounded and put one foot in front of the other, get it done, because I do feel that there is an event or has been an event that 
is leading to the dismantling of something but this is not going to be out of the blue this by the time you're watching this video you should already know what this is about and if you don't then maybe um it hasn't been brought to your attention yet because half the battle is awareness but please do keep an eye out for whatever's happening let's go ahead and pull these beautiful cards the lantern oracle love them okay and they've been wanting to make their way into the energies or into the cards, uh, into the readings. And that's really because there are certain energies in this, um, in this, in the air right now for you guys, the viewers who are watching, um, that are a little bit dense, a little bit dense, a little bit, I don't want to say secretive, but hush. Right, kind of giving me some some uh, scorpionic vibes, just as I said that. Look at the card, right? Yeah. And key to intimacy. Guys, this is scorpionic energy right here. Look at the shadow. The shadow but light. When I think about Scorpio, we of course we think about uh, the energies of the underworld. We think about intensity. We think about secrecy. We think about investigation, right? All of that is in here. But we also need to remember that... Um, yeah, thank you. They're also saying, look at this. We also need to remember that the Scorpio energy or Scorpionic energy can, ouch, <laughs> something just pinched me in my back. <laughs> Not something or something, I don't know, <laughs> someone who. <laughs> um, it, 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 think about the Scorpionic energies as bringers of the light. Now, why would you, ooh, 11 minutes, 22 seconds, guys, hello. Anytime I think about Scorpio, I think about 11 and I do think about 22, all right, get it. Why would the, scorpionic energies be considered bringers of the light well when you are working in your scorpionic element to the highest right you're delving in you're looking into those shadows you're looking at what's going on within you why because your end goal is always going to be this ten of cups emotional fulfillment you notice how the lights are very similar but we see here this scorpionic energy delving into the self into the psyche, into the nether regions of itself. And really with this five of wands energy, not being afraid to like push through it and see what's there and work through it. Why? So everything can become copacetic once again. <laughs> now I'm laughing because the work is never done, right? The inner work is never done, but what we can do or what we can liken it to is like, you know, in your closet, you like, open up the closet and you it's like a mess but you clean it up and then ah, good close it and i know that that's done and job well done i have worked through that inner part but then i can turn somewhere else to get some stuff done right this is what scorpio does when it's in its element you want something cleared out from the inside um into in the regions no one wants to go hey call your friendly local scorpio in their highest vibration because we need the Scorpio or Scorpionic energies that will go into the nether regions with the light, remember the light and take care of business and come back out. Not the ones that will get in there and get lost with the temptations and get lost in the energies and get get the little high off of the the shadows and the dark right we this is scorpio in the lower expression now we're now we are talking about uh pisces as well pisces pisceans we love you all pisces god bless you you guys have been around the longest right if you want to look at it that way but you guys do suffer from a lot of you do uh, suffer from temptation as well uh particularly escape uh, uh, disillusionment which one which card is this this is it what is this card distorted desire speak on it spirit yeah okay look at the light in the background Pisces you you Piscean energy you have to be over here guess who's coming to get you <laughs> Scorpio okay so for some of you guys you look to your scorpionic friends if the highing the higher vibing scorpionic friends not the ones that will <laughs> we love you we love all of you but not the ones that'll be sitting next to you in jail okay <laughs> I mean, those are, yeah, those are good best friends, but listen, we need, right, right now, we need you to be the one who's the one phone call, okay? <laughs> All right, last card, misalignment. Misalignment, sure, but guess what? Once you've been retrieved, once the energies come in, 
a part of it. And again, I'm, I'm talking about this in terms of characters, right? Yeah, our Scorpio friend comes in to liberate the Piscean friend who's lost in the daydreams and lost in the sauce and the ethers, right? To rescue them and pull them out. But really, you, on some level, are setting the intention to delve within yourself, to do the inner work, and to reclaim an aspect of you that is uh, not in alignment with your highest good. In short, uh, you're allowing yourself to release someone or something that doesn't serve your highest good at this time. If this is something that you are interested in doing the, under this Pisces moon, you will have the opportunity to do so. So it's like, it's like spirit is saying fire in the hole and you're like, yes, over here, please. So I, you know, make this, make a hole here so I can climb out. And once you are retrieved, in other words, once you have awakened, in other words, once you have self-actualized to a certain extent, once you have delved in inward and you've done your release, here we have you coming along with the card misalignment. But guess what? You were misaligned, but now you're up, out from that situation and you're recouping, you're lying down and you're resting. There is a little bit of a warning here under this Pisces moon to watch the distorted productions. In other words, watch the distorted uh, things that you're putting out. No lies. Love you, Pisces. You look, I have a lot of Neptunian energy and it is just killing my Virgo rising. So <laughs> the struggle is real, okay? But lying is not one of my things. But I do have to tell you, Pisces, you guys, we all, we all do our fibs, but some Pisces struggle with telling the truth. And part of that is because they see things in a different way. This is the lower expression of Pisces when you are caught in your daydreams. So, and you're, you're lost in your illusions, false things appearing real to you. So be mindful. I just got the side eye from Pisces. <laughs> Pisces for a second with was this girl like mm -hmm, okay I love you look I love you listen I'm with you okay um, but um, but uh, you know keeping it 100 this is the channeled message that's coming through watch the lies watch the untruths watch the fibs whatever you want to call it okay make it your habit and your dedication to seeing things as is just as oh my god see listen guides what up guides i always call you guys guides listen to everybody whenever i get down to myself okay i know i'm not just saying stuff to say it radical honesty right thank you spirit yeah it hurts to tell the truth these are beautiful cards aren't they it hurts to tell the truth but radical honesty pisces do yourself a favor uh, people, not just pi people with Pisces placements, we're talking about the moon, so the energy is here. So we're going to be faced with these qualities of the Pisces here. So do us, do all of yourselves a favor, and as you release, make sure that you are being honest about what it is that you're seeing about yourself, what it is that you're learning about the people around you, so that you can take care of business. Now, I don't know if you guys had the chance to look at... Um, I don't know which reading it was because there are just so many, but I just finished putting out the January 2022 reading and the week one of January reading and the moon in Aquarius reading. So maybe it was the January monthly reading or the first week reading, but they talked about this energy of needing to um, acknowledge denial and to, you know, once we're aware of the fact that we tend to deny things because of the pain that comes with it, then we're in a better place to really move forward. And it's funny because um, I do see here the guides once again repeating their, ener their energetic message that we're here to help you move through this. We're coming together for the sake of helping you move through this. I wonder what reading that was, God bless. I think that was, thank you, week one reading, uh, Divine Assistance, yeah. For January 1st to January 9th, divine assistance coming to help you digest this message. Yes, God bless. They talk about um, they talk about uh, how there is a message coming in for us this week, and we have to allow ourselves to 
lean on spirit in order to or, or people in your friendship circle right spirit works through as a course in miracles teaches us uh, spirit the holy spirit works through us to help each other it's a fame it's that same old story where somebody's like hey i've been praying to god and God's not helping and God's like, listen, I sent somebody to your door three times and you kept, <laughs> you know, turning them away. I sent the UPS guy, I sent your sister-in-law and I sent that little kid who, you know, throws things at you from next door. You didn't listen. What, what do you want me to do? Right. And so we have to acknowledge that uh, spirit does work through the physical, through the people in our lives. So make sure that you are listening to spirit. Now, the guides are saying commands. Some of you are are issuing commands god bless you but they're also saying that some of you you know like you're the boss but they're also saying that some of you need to get out of that place where you think you're the boss and you're telling people what to do instead you need to get into a place where you are receiving look at her hands all demure and she's like i listen i listen to thee <laughs> Yes, I listen to the yeah. Now you, whenever you, um, they talked about this. Whenever you uh, perceive yourself as being attacked, that's because you are actually attacking the world. Who's they? A Course in Miracles. Love that book, guys. Love that book. You gotta get it. But um, same thing here. If you are thinking that, oh my God, someone's trying to tell me what to do. Someone's trying to command me. That's because you, my dear, you are trying to be the boss and you might be used to commanding other people and telling people what to do or just whatever and here they're showing this card you know get it together be honest be honest that that's what you're doing that's where you're at and so that's why you perceive of people commanding you but actually sometimes the message that you need to hear is issued within a command or it's issued in a way that you perceive of being a command, but it's not. So Spirit is saying just listen to all of the things that are being said to you over the, this moon cycle and just in general. And really take the ego out of it and ask, is this something that I really need to uh, listen to? And that's, that's it. And of course, it's understandable that you might not want to listen to it because again the denial is strong and there's a reason why because heart heartbreak and and hurt and pain is behind it because when some when you learn something when you learn something and uh you know that you're going to be forced to like take an action you're not ready to take or see yourself in a light you're not ready to see yourself as or you know or change your view of the world and you're not ready to do that these are all reasons why you might block yourself from taking the nat the natural action which would be to listen okay thank you spirit um anyway love her key i love that look at her she's like okay i listen i listen to thee <laughs> who's thee I, uh, all right anyway you guys um so that's your moon in Pisces reading, uh, waxing crescent moon in Pisces. Um, yeah, I, I like it. It's a cleanup energy. It's a nice cleanup energy. And it's one of those energies that if you're open and you're willing to receive the information and your interests are in, the, in, a, in aligning with your highest good, which is in turn in the highest good of all of those around you, then... This is great. That's miracle working right now. Right, yeah, right now. They're reminding us right now, now, now. Yeah. So, so please do. And I would just say, just be mindful of the way that you're dealing with other people as well. A teaspoon of sugar really helps as opposed to clubbing somebody and taking them back to your, back to your home. <laughs> Emperor. <laughs> we don't need an emperor's approach right now. We need the emperor's drive and the Empress's Touch. Ooh, I love that. What's this card? Ah, whatever this card is. Eight of Swords, yes. Imprisoned thoughts, obsessive thoughts, fear-based thinking, right? Let it go. That's what you need. You need to be uh, proactive in your masculine to drop that attitude, but then you need to take the wizened woman approach in how you, you um, touch the lives of others as you do your thing, okay? All right, guys, God bless you. Um, if you'd like to have a personal reading with me or if you'd like to have an energy healing session with me, you know where to find me. My information is somewhere on this page, but it's on my Etsy page, okay? Love you guys. Bye.